Greetings, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the booty of cryptocurrency, the booty, the prize, the spoils of war. This is the thing that we got into crypto for, okay? It's the privacy. We don't want people looking at how we're using money. And we have, the way this plays out is the landscape is that we kind of have to uh, participate in this uh, the use of the currency in a way that allows anyone to see how we're using the money for the most part. But we can also use the privacy to escape whatever liabilities that not having the privacy would create for us. So there's these choke points, right? We, we have the choke points at the exchanges where we can have the convenience of going from dollars to coins. And we've talked at length about that. It's a, you know, a, a big subject, but I wanted to go into discussing what really the prize is here. And we actually have that technology for the first time in history. We actually have something that the United States, okay, presumably the most powerful military force in human history, okay, on the planet, we have technology that was defined by the U.S. military as an auxiliary equipment. In fact, it was in the munitions list. I think it still is actually, it's a matter of law. I'm gonna show you in a second. Clinton uh, back in the nineties moved it to the, the commerce list so it could be used in the private sector. Part of that had to do with um, allowing the, pri uh, the private businesses to be have access to the global positioning satellite system, okay, the GPS. So anyways, Let's get into this uh, subject here, and I'm just going to tell you my take on it. I'm quite optimistic. We really shouldn't be fearful here. So uh, let me just, uh, my, I'm going to share my screen. I, I made myself some notes. I may be talking out of school a little bit. Please correct me. But the bottom line here is I'm going to show you that everything that you've been learning with my strategies and be, you know, being introduced to the, the inner workings, if you will, of the tax system and reporting system that doesn't change. I don't care what rules they're introducing, but we have the technology. We can use it. All right. So let me just share a screen here. And I'm, I'm just going to show you. Here's an article from a year ago. Okay. We knew this. We knew they were going to do this, right? They want to, they want to, they, meaning the, let's call it the financial crimes network. Okay. FinCEN under the guise of policing money laundering, okay, what they really want to do is prevent people from getting rich. <laughs> they don't want money out there that accumulates where they don't have control over it. Okay, we, we all understand that. So Financial Crimes Network, FinCEN, let's call them. I don't care about their dollar limits here, $10,000, $3,000. They want to see everything that you're doing. They want your name, your tax number, uh, your home address, uh, <clears throat> your credit information, whatever, they want that connected to your blockchain data. Wherever you have an interest in private keys on cryptographic currency on those blockchains and those platforms, they want to associate that, make that association. So here's you know what they're talking about. This is basically, this article is talking about where they're going to have these choke points with the exchanges or the unregulated exchanges or decentralized ones, right? Like the soft wallets, the hard wallets, Ledger, Exodus, things like that. They wanna collect that information and they're gonna use Coinbase to do that. This is nothing new. They're gonna use the exchanges that are doing KYC to collect KYC when you exit those exchanges to go onto one that's not doing KYC. I mean, that's what I would do if I were them. So anyways, here's what, look at what they're doing. They're saying that, oh, we have a noble cause here. You know, malign actors increasingly using uh, CVC to facilitate international terrorist financing. Yeah. Okay, right. That's what we're all doing. Okay. We all know that stuff. So anyways, public comment period. They're saying basically, yeah, we don't have to ask permission. We're just going to make these rules. But you know what? We're going to publish some rules anyways. And we're just going to see what kind of people, how they object. I don't care what they do. I wouldn't even object. I don't oppose them. I don't care. Why? Because we have the technology. I'll give, I'll give you the examples, okay? All right, so they're trying to make it into the banking system that we have today. Now, I should tell you, that, think about it. The money system we've lived with up until now, up until the popularity of cryptographic currency, okay? We, almost, we have very little choices on privacy. 
But with cryptographic currency, we have way more choices. They're almost limitless, I would argue. So there's no reason for us to be uh, you know, concerned. Just be pragmatic. Widespread pushback. Eh, I don't really care. Um, so they want to, yeah, they're sharing information, right? So they're using the existing infrastructure to, to collect your information. That's fine. I mean, I, I told you guys, uh, many of you, uh, that uh, recently this year, I, I, my wife was using, was using Cash App. I told her not to do that. She had Bitcoin in there. It became worth a lot. So I said, well, okay, let's take the money out of there. And I had to use, take a photograph of my driver's license in my face to get the, to get the account uh, liquidated. Okay, so what? I don't like doing that, but it doesn't create a liability for me. All right, and I'm the first person to not disclose things and have privacy. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you. We have the technology such as, I'm just gonna give you a brief uh, couple of notes here. <clears throat> first of all, like I said previously, cryptography was, it, the government tried to monopolize the use of it like it would um, nuclear weapons, okay? Like it would a machine that encrypts messages. And that, that did happen for, for many years. It happened during World War II. I mean, it's happened throughout history, really. But cryptography now is so available, just like the printing press was a special thing. Now it's not, right? Cryptography, same thing. But thanks to technology, and actually thanks to us that created the technology in the first place, it's not something that can be sequestered, monopolized, or regulated, just like um, you can't monopolize the use of cryptography by calling it military auxiliary equipment. You can try, that failed, okay, as of around 1992. That's why I think, I mean, I think really the plan was to disseminate this technology and then regulate it. But I think we're smart enough to know our way around it. So. My analogy here is that you can no more regulate the use of cryptography or secrecy than you can license the use of the letter K. Or a better example, I think, would be license the understanding and use of the quadratic equation to solve algebraic problems, right? Or Newton's laws of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. Good luck licensing that one. You know, they're not going to do it. So anyways, we have the technology. We can have people write wallets. We don't need the dark web even. We can write wallets. I'm not saying we even have to do that because there's some really off the shelf type things we could do. For example, let's say you move money around and you're doing KYC everywhere and your hard soft wallets and your public wallet, central wallets and all this stuff. And then the very moment you go to do something important where you might have a gain, you, you go into Monero and then out to the thing you wanna do. There's a record that you went into Monero, but then what? Okay, and I'll, I'll give you a real life example, or I've done, I've done many of this, many of these examples before, but just keep this in mind. You go to Monero, or you go to a paper wallet, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to this. All right, so we have Monero. We can write our own wallets, and as you can see right here, here's a website. It tells you how uh, your own wallet can be developed, how to build a Bitcoin wallet or any kind of wallet. You can write one yourself. Okay, it's telling you how to do this. You can you can write one from scratch. You can use one that's already uh, in open source. They they a lots lots of them already begin with open source. You can go get an open source app and develop your own wallet. And let's say the wallet that you develop, only you and your friends use it. How are you going to police that? You can't. And and so forth and so on, right? Paper wallets is an old school, let's call it old school, uh, old tech, low tech uh, method of getting privacy. And I'll explain that in a second um, and so forth. So I just want to show you, look, there's just one website and they even go, they give you, if you're asking yourself, gosh, John, you're, what are you talking about? I have to write my own code or I have to find someone to write my own code. Well, is that going to cost a lot of money? Yeah, maybe it'll cost a thousand bucks. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's ten thousand bucks. Maybe it's two hundred dollars. I don't know. But someone put the rundown of what's involved in developing your own code for a private wallet. And look at he put an hours hour by hour breakdown into developing this application. 
So look at how many hours. When we get down, these are all the things that have to come into it, which maybe some of these can be eliminated. But anyways, you come into about 700 hours. So what? I'm not saying I'm going to do it. I'm just saying it's out there. I, at this point, I really don't care. But I'm just saying we don't have to be uh, concerned about this. All right. We can, we can use Monero, for example, or coins like that, blockchains like that. We can write our own wallet, when not from scratch or from scratch. We can have a washing service or what they call a laundering service. I hate to use laundering because laundering has a connotation that it's illegal. And of course, we can use a way, to, we can use a pass through. So sure, we can, we can move money off of the blockchain. They can see it from beginning to end, right? And then what happens is it goes into a pass through. And of course, that can be seen too. I've been doing that for 30 years. Okay, without, I'm not trying to get privacy there in the sense that uh, everyone can see my client's transactions. They just can't see what property rights he has or the property rights, the way I have them set up, show that my client has no gain. So we have these tools. So we go into the dollars, which are taxable, but we're using a pass-through. And I'm gonna to get to this punchline here at the end, and I'm gonna share with you how um, I've coached some of my clients over the years, answer questions regarding things where they, they just left in a situation where they're gonna be asked about a transaction, okay? And I'll explain. Um, but we wanna move money around so that there's no record of us having received a personal gain, okay? Um, Right, so we so the old school would be a paper wallet. This is what I want to get to. So we could do a paper wallet or something similar to that. So let's make it similar to uh, buying gold. So I buy gold from somebody. That's not taxable. The gold gets shipped to me, or let's just say it gets shipped to me. Nobody knows anything about that. I can actually trade that gold by handing it to somebody and I can get stuff, right? But let's say if I go and sell it, if I want to go to dollars, right, the dollars are taxable and maybe the value or disposition or the, the worth of that gold from the time I bought it to the time I sold it. And if I had, if it's worth more dollars, the dollars are taxable. But if I sold it in the name of a thing that's a pass through, okay, we all understand that, not a problem. Um, but yeah, we have more choices now because of this technology. Um, here's what what I've explained to clients over the years, and this is an actual, just one that comes to mind. So I had a client one time that she had a, it was, she was in the middle of some sort of deal with the IRS, okay, when I got the case, and she was trying to get a payment plan with them. And they don't like to do payment plans if it shows you have the ability to pay. They shouldn't do payment plans. And um, we're gonna come back to share screen in just a second. So she had sold a boat for $30,000. And the money you know, got deposited in her bank. She got a check. She put the money in, funds cleared. And then with a month or so later, she had to go meet with the IRS. And of course, they had all these records by this time. And um, she asked me, well, what happens when they ask about the $30,000? Because they already had the records. We already knew that. And I said, well, confirm the correctness of the records the IRS obtained from your bank. And then stop talking. Let them decide what to do. Because for all they know, and it really doesn't factor into something, but for all they know, that you decided you had to pay a another creditor besides the IRS because it was more important for whatever reason. Maybe it was the right thing to do. I don't know. So I said, just confirm that. And you guys can do this. Think think this through. Confirm if you if you just if you can't get around, you know, concealing something. Confirm the correctness of what is of shown in some cases, right? And then don't don't give any more information. Don't give any more information than what is already uh, discovered, and just just wait. And I, and I said, if you can't stand that, if you can't stand the suspense, and keep your mouth shut, and look them in the eye, and you know, don't say anything else. Just say, well, you know, um, if they ask what you do with the money, you can say, well, there were other creditors I had to pay. I'm sorry, but it was urgent. Uh, I had promised people and these are friends and family and it was important to pay them. And so then what? You deal with the consequences. So what? Nothing wrong there. And you got to do what you wanted with the money. So what? Yeah, and so that's that's uh, what I was gonna suggest. I mean, when you move money to a paper wallet, for example, that's much like going to cash. That's much, much like uh, taking your gold out of a vault. Okay, the gold was shipped to you. That is not a disposition of assets, right? 
So we can do those things. All right. So I'm going to switch over here and look at uh, one more thing. Actually, there's a couple more. And I just want to find some examples here. So let me go over here to this. What I want to show you is just um, what, how the US is trying to regulate <clears throat> our access and use of cryptography. They're looking at it like cryptography as this um, you know, military equipment, OK? And so it was cryptography was defined as I mean, was in the munition list category. So it was considered like a bullet or a missile launcher or a uh, whatever, a military weapon, right? Just like you would say a certain type of metal is a military grade weapon or military grade material. So anyways, they have this here. I've never read this. I just happened to see this just, just now when I was uh, putting this video together. But if you wanna look this up, I mean, <clears throat> you can see here what they've got, right? They're trying to regulate this. They gave up in 1992. But if I go over here and you can find this on Wikipedia, nothing special. Uh, there's versions of this, but anyways, I just wanted to show because this is what caught my attention over here. Uh, Clinton issued an executive order. Now, keep in mind, the law had defined cryptography and included it on the munitions list. Uh, but Clinton in 1996 wrote an executive order to put it uh, in commerce. I don't know if it's off the munitions list. Maybe it is. I don't. I don't understand. You know, wh which has more uh, control. I don't think the executive order is so binding as a law would be. But I'm just saying, for some reason, he did that. I don't know. Maybe they couldn't get some legislation for it. But you see what's going on here, okay? That's why I say the title of this video is the is uh, cryptography is the booty of it's the prize, okay, of cryptographic currency, and we have access to it. We actually control it. So I wouldn't be so concerned about it. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna do this. You're gonna see, I believe, coming up this year, first quarter next year. I think you're gonna see more and more where uh, the choke points that we have identified, where some of you guys are able to do uh, accounts, where there's no KYC. That's going gonna go away. No KYC for for soft wallets and hard wallets. That's gonna go away. And I really don't care. And I'm one of the probably the biggest privacy advocate you're gonna find. I still don't care. I just think uh, we have the power here, okay? We just have to realize what we got, right? So I hope that uh, gives you some optimism and I hope this is useful.